Hi, um, I'm Vic Fawkes, registered veterinary nurse and DVNA council member. Uh, and to celebrate 20 years of Veterinary Nurse Awareness Month, um, we are interviewing registered veterinary nurses um, who have been qualified for 20 years or more. Um, so uh, this evening, I am joined by my very good friend and BVNA mom, uh, Steph Worsley. Um, and we're going to ask her a couple of questions today. She has been qualified for over 20 years and is what we call a vintage nurse. Um, so uh, we will let her introduce herself because she has had an amazing career and she's going to tell you a little bit about it. Over to you, Steph. Thank you very much, Vic. Um, yeah, so I'm Steph Worsley. I have, I started in practice, I'm registered as a student veterinary nurse on the 31st of August in 1999. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that was a, a while ago. I am currently a head veterinary nurse of a independent practice in North Wales. And I am also a BVNA council member. I'm in my second year on BVNA council now, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I've worked at various practices all over the Northwest, um, including some time spent as an internal medicine specialist nurse at Liverpool University. So lots of experience there. So, yeah. Lovely. And uh, what do you say? You said you qualified all the way back then in 1999. No, I registered as a student in 1999. Right, okay. I actually qualified in um 2003. So 21 years this year. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. So if it was 2003 um trying to work out cuz I was I was a portfolio nurse, so it it gone on by then, but does that make you a green book nurse? No. So I was first year portfolio so literally, if I'd have started nursing even six months earlier, I'd have been green book. Ah, uh, uh, okay. But I was literally one of the first cohort to be on the portfolio. Um, so I managed, I, during my training, um, I saw the portfolio in editions one and edition two. So I saw it kind of progress through, which was really good that they took on uh, feedback from the student nurses at the time to see what needed tweaking and, and what have you to make things a little bit easier for us. But I still actually have my original put green folder with all the original templates in um, from when <laughs> I very first started nursing, oh, which amazing. was... I haven't got my actual finished work, but I've got that original portfolio, which was, yeah. yeah. Well, I think uh, I think I'm the, I was one of the first that did the second one. So yeah. thank you for that because I obviously got the better version of, of <laughs> all your all your students' complaints. Um, yeah. But but yeah, it was uh, it, it was really quite strange because it was totally changing, wasn't it? And I think, yeah. I think looking back now that was the it it was just the the veterinary nursing profession really did start sort of taking control for itself didn't it and, and really looking at, at how it was progressing and, and what more we could do um which was which was brilliant yeah definitely I definitely think it was the start of the change for us yeah. as a profession oh you were you oh froze there a minute sorry um yeah I think it was the start of the change for our profession um oh. back when they introduced the portfolio and kind of moved on from there yeah yeah definitely definitely um so talking about the uh progression of the profession that brings <laughs> me nicely on to my next question um so what progression have you seen in the profession in the last 20 years um, I, I think one of the biggest things I've seen in the last 20 years is us becoming registered 
and us having that little bit more autonomy with how we go about our, our jobs um, and also it meant that the vets could give us that little bit more responsibility um, I think definitely getting that registration in place I can remember it all coming in um, and there were lots of people for it lots of people against it at that time but I think yeah. as time has progressed we've all realised that it is the right thing for us to do um, and because it's then regulating us and we've become we've become um accountable for our own actions yeah. in in the job that we do so i think that was that's kind of the biggest thing for me and obviously the progression of the degree um coming in I, yeah. I can remember the degree starting um, and I've seen it, it grow and evolve as well. And also the the furthering of the education system. So the, the different additional qualifications we can come by. When I first qualified, we had a advanced diploma and that was it. But now yeah. we've got the inserts and and things like that and obviously we've got um people doing the vts's mm -hmm. so the vet, yeah. vet tech specialists um qualifications from over in america and bringing those skills or bringing that qualification back to the uk as well which i think is a massive thing for the profession yeah i agree yeah it really, it really has moved on hasn't it and um you know you can there's so many different avenues that you can go down as well Definitely. you know to be able to it, it, right like you say from doing the diploma that was um you know the advanced qualification then but it was still um looking at all parts of of the nursing qualification for now being able to specialize yeah, yeah. definitely yeah um, moving forward yeah definitely <laughs> So when we are moving forward, where do you want to see us go? Where do you see us in the future? Oh, so the future, for me, I think the future of veterinary nursing is very bright. Um, we need to keep fighting for protecting our title um, and getting that. That for me is, is kind of our next big step because then we can kind of progress and hopefully get advanced practitioner status um, and so we can work more like the human nurses so we've got the the advanced practitioner nurses in your gp practices and and things like that who can who have a, a small um amount of drugs that they can prescribe to to people and i think for for us as veterinary nurses i think that is something that we need to strive for and and bring that even more autonomy back to us and and make make that kind of the next step for us really and i think that will it will come i i have no doubt that it will do um i just hope that it comes sooner rather than later <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely um <clears throat> so then getting into all the ins and outs of the the nursing profession um what do you think that we aren't talking about but should be it's quite a good question that um for me as someone who i i suffer from with my mental health I'm also perimenopausal. Um, so I think for me, those are two big things that, yes, we are starting to talk about. But I really don't think that we are talking about enough, um, especially mental health. We all know that the profession is a very emotive profession. Um, we do suffer from compassion fatigue and burnout and 
I think there needs to be more discussions. I've always been very, very open with my struggles with my mental health. And definitely when I started in the perimenopausal kind of area, that did take a nosedive as well. So I think mm-hmm. those two things do go very much hand in hand. Um, and I definitely think that we need to be shouting from the rooftops and pe- having those difficult conversations with each other and not hiding our heads in the sand a little bit with it because I think we need to be the more of us that talk about it the more com- commonplace those discussions will become and the easier those discussions will become and so people will hopefully feel a lot easier a lot happier talking to each other about those those sorts of subjects um and then if people do need additional help additional guidance then that can be brought in into those conversations because we've got to help each other out we really do definitely and it was also bringing awareness for for other people as well isn't it you know exactly so that so that people that aren't having um or that don't have mental health issues can understand that better and understand how they can yeah. help definitely. their colleagues and definitely yeah. like you say giving them the um avenues that they can go down so they can know where to where to get help as well yeah definitely definitely okay we're nearly there I've got one more to go okay and obviously it's something that we're uh, we're we're very passionate about what does the protect the title mean to you it means absolutely everything um for me to have that title protected would be the epitome of everything it it literally would be um the most amazing thing that we can do for our profession at this time um there are still people out there i've come across them on various websites this weekend calling themselves veterinary nurses and they haven't had that qualification they haven't um worked towards it they haven't had all the training that me and you have gone through um and so for me it's it is just the at the moment the be all and end all um i know it takes a long long time i know for example dental nurses it took almost 20 years for them to to get their title protected um but we are working towards it we're having those conversations now and that is absolutely amazing and i think as part of bvna council i'm very proud that as council we are having those conversations we are getting invited to the house of commons house of lords to have those conversations with the people who can make that change for us um and i think we all just need to keep on keeping on with it and we'll we will start chipping away at it and we will get there um we, there are plans in place to keep on moving on and contacting MPs and um people like that who will who are the people we need to be kind of pushing this agenda upon and making them aware as to how important it is for us as registered veterinary nurses but also for our colleagues our clients and most importantly our patients because that for me is the the baseline for everything we need to be protecting our patients and to be able to do that safely and um in the right ways we need to get the title protected we really do um so yeah it's uh as you can tell i'm very (laughs) emotional (laughs) about this um and yeah it is one of the the big things and 
I know there are discussions as to why is it taking so long, unfortunately, because it, it needs to go through Parliament. It's an it's a change in law. Um, it's not something that can happen overnight. Um, no, so it takes think, a lot of work from behind the scenes, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we all need to get involved in it as well. And you know, um, as you say, us as, as council members, then then yes, we are working very hard, and and the staff at BVNA are working tremendously Honestly, hard. Yeah. Um, you know, um, but also veterinary nurses need to work very hard those those registered yeah. nurses need to work really hard don't they they yeah. need to fill in the surveys they need to speak to their mps yeah you know, um there's yeah. things that we, they can do yeah we can't do way. it alone no we need every single registered veterinary nurse to help us yeah yeah and then we need all of their friends all of their family everybody that anybody knows we need their help to to get this pushed through and um get that title protected and hopefully next you know we have a conversation in the not Fingers distant crossed. future that we'll uh that we'll be celebrating and it'll actually yeah. have gone through and we will be yeah. protected yeah oh well Steph, thank you ever so much not a problem at all, Vic. Amazing. Always love having a, a <laughs> chat with you. Um, yeah. And uh, amazing answers to, to the questions. So <laughs> thank you very much for taking the time. I know you're a very busy lady. Um, no problem. Thank you so much for asking me, Vic. <laughs> well, you know, very welcome. It's very deserving. You should, uh, mm -hmm. you should be asked. Anybody that knows you understands where I'm coming from with that. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I will let you go. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Have a lovely evening. You too. And, uh, and I shall see you very soon. Yep. Take care.